Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 10th of January. India's Apex Court orders review of internet shutdown in Jammu and Kashmir. Will never participate in anyone else's war, says Pakistan PM on US Iran tensions. And Hindus in Northern India take holy dip on auspicious full moon day. And now for all the details. India's apex court, while hearing petitions challenging restrictions in Jammu and Kashmir, ordered the region's administration to review within one week all restrictive orders in place since the government ended special status to the former province on August 5 last year. Amid months of communication and internet lockdown in India's Jammu and Kashmir, the Supreme Court on Friday said that right to access the internet is a fundamental right under Article 19 of the Constitution of India. A five-judge bench headed by Justice N.V. Ramana, while hearing petitions challenging restrictions in the region, ordered the Jammu and Kashmir administration to review within one week all restrictive orders in place since the government ended special status to the former province in August 5th. The court held that in so far as the uh, shutdown of internet is concerned, it has, uh, the court said that uh, it is to be recognized that freedom of internet is part of freedom of speech and expression and is therefore given constitutional protection under Article 19.1 of the Constitution, there, which implies that any restrictions must meet the test laid out in Article 19.2. The Indian government had justified restrictions and said that due to the preventive steps, not a single life was lost and not a single bullet was fired. Meanwhile, envoys of 15 countries, including the US, who are on a two-day trip to Jammu and Kashmir on Friday, interacted with civil society representatives and community leaders in Jammu city. The foreign delegation arrived in the Kashmir Valley on Thursday to assess the ground situation and get a sense of Indian government's efforts in bringing normalcy in the region. On Thursday, they interacted with political representatives, civil society members, as well as military top brass. The envoys are here as part of the government's diplomatic outreach to rebut Pakistan's propaganda on the Kashmir issue. India hit out at Pakistan at the UN Security Council on Thursday, accusing its representatives of epitomizing the dark arts and peddling falsehoods. This came after Pakistan, at an open debate, brought up the issue of Jammu and Kashmir and accused India of false and duplicitous claims on normalcy in the region after scrapping the special status. India's ambassador and permanent representative to the United Nations, Syed Akbaruddin, he doubted Pakistan at an open debate at the UN Security Council on Thursday. Pakistan should stop peddling falsehoods and heal itself from its malice, Akbaruddin said, calling it a country that epitomizes the dark arts. He also called out the top UN body for its inability to counter terror from Pakistan. Akbaruddin said the Security Council faced crisis of identity and legitimacy as well as relevance and performance. One delegation that epitomizes the dark arts has yet again displayed its wares by peddling falsehoods earlier today. These we dismiss with disdain. My simple response to that delegation, the delegation of Pakistan, is even though it is late, neighbor, heal thyself of your malaise. There are no takers here for your malware. Akbaruddin made the comments after Pakistan's UN envoy Munir Akram brought up the scrapping of Jammu and Kashmir's special status and accused India of false and duplicitous claims on normalcy in the region after imposing unilateral measures. 
Indian government had ended Jammu and Kashmir's special status on August 5 and split it into two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Moving on. Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardena on Friday said that India and Sri Lanka are working together to combat the menace of terrorism. He made the remarks a day after he held bilateral talks with his Indian counterpart S. Jay Shankar in New Delhi. Asserting that terrorism is a growing problem across the world, Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardena on Friday said, India and Sri Lanka are working together to combat the menace. Gunavardhana, who is on a two-day visit to India, paid obeisance at a Buddhist temple in Indian capital New Delhi on Friday. His visit marks a high-level follow-up to Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's India visit in November last year. India had then announced a 450 million US dollar line of credit to Sri Lanka for development and counter-terrorism. Terrorism is a danger for India as well as for Sri Lanka. And terrorism is a growing uh, problem across the world. And especially in India and Sri Lanka, we have given special attention and we are working together on this field. Earlier on Thursday, Gunavardhana held bilateral meetings with his Indian counterpart S. J. Shankar and other top leaders. This was Gunavardhana's first official visit after taking over as foreign minister last November following the formation of the new government under President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. Sri Lanka's All Sail on Makthil Congress has warned that any constitutional amendments to remove minority parties from the parliament are anti-democratic and endanger the reconciliation among communities. This comes after President Gotabaya Rajapaksa last week said there was need for constitutional and electoral reform for a stable government. Leader of All Ceylon Makkal Congress or ACMC Rishad Batiuddin has said that any constitutional amendment to remove minority parties from parliament were anti-democratic and endanger the reconciliation among communities. Speaking during the adjournment debate on President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's policy statement in parliament, Batiuddin said, the new government's intentions to amend the constitution appears to be aimed at reducing the power of minority political parties. Gotabaya, while addressing the parliament last Friday, sought constitutional and electoral reform, saying that the country wasn't suited to a system that creates unstable governments, constantly under the influence of extremism. The proportional representation electoral system currently followed in Sri Lanka allows smaller parties to be represented in this legislature with a minimum vote percentage. Rajapaksa said, the constitution has many confusions, and changes are needed. He said a strong presidency, parliament and judiciary needs to be created through constitutional changes. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has said that his country will never get involved in wars of other countries while expressing his stance amid spike in tensions between Iran and United States. He said Pakistan had earlier been committing mistakes in its foreign policy by getting involved in wars of others. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has said that his country will never get involved in wars of other countries again, referring to the recent spike in tensions between Iran and the United States. Khan on Thursday said Pakistan will become a country that will serve as an example for other Muslim countries around the world and lead them. He added his country had been committing mistakes in its foreign policy by getting involved in wars of others. Prime Minister Khan made the comments a day after he directed Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi to visit Iran, Saudi Arabia and the United States. He said in a tweet that Pakistan is ready to play its role for peace, but it can never again be part of any war. Tensions between the United States and Iran spiked up after the killing of top Iranian General Qasim Soleimani on January 3rd in a U.S. drone strike. Tehran in response attacked a military base in Iraq housing American troops. Iran, with a Shiite Muslim majority, enjoys a large support base in Pakistan, its neighbor to the east. Though Pakistan is a Sunni Muslim majority country, it has a fairly large Shiite population. 
In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's Independent Electoral Complaints Commission has said that votes cast during presidential election in 1,645 polling stations across 18 provinces will be recounted on Saturday. The announcement comes amid regular complaints of fraudulent votes in the counting process. Spokesman for Afghanistan's Independent Electoral Complaints Commission or IECC, Mohammad Qasim Ilyasi has said that votes cast during presidential election in 1,645 polling stations across 18 provinces will be recounted on Saturday. Ilyasi said the important decision in the recounting process is the differences in votes, the use of votes before and after the legal polling time, suspicious votes and the revocation of votes without reason. According to the election law, the IECC has less than two weeks to finalize the results of the complaints filed over counting of votes and share their work with the Independent Election Commission. The development by the IECC comes after it was announced last month that incumbent President Mohammad Ashraf Ghani was leading the preliminary results of the September 28 election by 50.64%. The results of the crucial poll have been delayed three times due to rifts over roughly 300,000 disputed votes. Scores of Hindu devotees bathed in holy rivers in northern India on Friday to mark the auspicious full moon day, Posh Purnima. They offered prayers to the sun and the moon gods while performing religious rituals. Thousands of devouts bathed in holy rivers in northern India on Friday on the occasion of Posh Purnima or full moon day of the 10th month of the Hindu calendar which is considered auspicious. Devotees in the temple town of Haridwar took holy dip in river Ganges and prayed to the sun and moon gods while performing religious rituals. According to popular Hindu belief, taking a holy dip in holy rivers on the occasion of full moon day relieves devotees of all their sins, including those committed during their past lives. Similar sins were witnessed in Nadan Priyagrat city, which is home to Sangam or the confluence of three holy rivers of Ganges, Yamuna and Mythical Saraswati. The district administration of Priyagraj had made elaborate arrangements for security along with cleanliness and traffic management on the occasion. We that the people the Posh Purnima also marks the beginning of month-long period of Kalpuvas to mark annual Mark Mela festival in Priyagraj, wherein devotees pray and fast for religious and spiritual solace. As northern parts of India continue to shiver due to cold wave, fresh snowfall in popular hill station of Nainital on Thursday brought cheer to the visitors. Around 1 degree Celsius temperature was recorded in parts of Nainital on Thursday. Popular hill station of Nenital in India's northern Uttarakhand province received yet another spell of snowfall on Thursday, bringing cheers to the visitors. The famous mall road in Nenital was covered with a white sheet of snow and the surrounding hills of Nenital Lake were also covered with snow. The tourists enjoyed themselves as they played with snowballs and other games in snow. Meanwhile, another tourist hotspot, Dharamshala, in northern Himachal Pradesh province, was seen covered in a thick blanket of snow. The snow-laden roads and trees added to the hillside city's scenic beauty. Tourists from across India and globe often visit Dharamshala to enjoy the cold weather during winter season. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.